Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, so heating season is upon us. People are starting to call me to start to service their boilers. They want maintenance. They also want to take care of leaks that actually happened last season, but they kind of let them go for the summer. And that's what this is. This customer called me up last year, noticed he was losing water out of the boiler, wanted me to come in and take a look. I did. I said, you know what? Let me come down. I'll run the boiler, see what's going on. I found the leak. You'll see in the video on the right side of the boiler. And this video is basically about changing a rotted nipple or a rotted piece of pipe coming out of the right side of the boiler. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. And if you have questions, uh, I'll see you after the video. So this customer inherited the boiler from the previous homeowner. Uh, last year, noticed that he was losing water. And you can see the red bucket there on the right. Uh, I came in, uh, turned the boiler on, and it actually wouldn't go on because it was on low water. So after the feeder cycled, it filled up, ran, and it was evident that that nipple coming out of the side of the boiler was compromised. I don't know why that happened, but the idea here is you see the union on top and the union there to the right. I'm going to disconnect, back off those unions, and back everything off so I can get to this nipple. Now, this nipple is not going to screw out although a lot of novices may feel they can put a wrench on there, but I can tell you from experience, I don't even bother anymore. That's going to have to be cut out. But again, I went there and pre-cut all these pieces prior to coming to do this job. So it was going to be a relatively, uh, basically take apart and put back together piece for piece job. Uh, just makes life easier rather than cut everything there uh, on the job. But as you can see, this nipple is pretty compromised and under pressure, it actually started to leak in the bucket. And uh, I don't know exactly why this happened, why that got so crowded out. I, I would imagine, I don't think he was taking water out of the boiler like he should have. So that kind of could have contributed to the reason why uh, it rusted out like that. There's probably a lot of accumulation inside that nipple. And uh, yeah, so uh, the idea now was let's get this out of here. So I backed off the union's unscrewed all that piping, took the T off, and now it's time to cut my uh, my nipple out. Now, I cut it off with a sawzall. You'll see there I have the slit in top, but this is what I did to make that slit. Uh, take the sawzall. The idea is to make a slit and not cut into the bushing. You don't want to compromise the female threads inside the fitting, which I did not do, uh, but that takes a lot of experience and uh, feel with your hands not to do. Next was to knock that piece out. So I used my caping chisel like I usually do. And that nipple was pretty, pretty rotten. So it came out pretty, pretty easily as you'll see here. So you knock one side in and uh, get that in. As you can see, it folded in nicely. And I knock the other side in and uh, that will loosen. And uh, although I did try to screw it out with my hands, it did... Uh, require the old channel locks to get it turning. Uh, this one came out rather easily because that nipple was extremely rotted, especially on the bottom. It was really, really paper thin. Uh, some of them, some of them are, are, are pretty well intact and you have to, you know, really whack on it to get them out. But you want to do everything you can do to not damage the female threads. In this case, it's a bushing. Uh, I, I personally would have came out full size with two inch, but they bushed it down to inch and a quarter. Uh, you see all sorts of things here in the field. You know, guys, uh, they don't go into the uh, instruction manual of the boilers to see uh, what sizes the manufacturer recommends, but it is what it is. And uh, so now the next thing I want to do is go in there and I carry um, taps, pipe taps, anywhere from like three eighths of an inch up to two inch. And I always like to run a tap through there. So what I did was I sprayed it with uh, some WD-40. Uh, you could put something cu cutting oil on there, but the threads were pretty pretty good. Uh, and I didn't have to really uh, be too concerned about putting cutting oil on there. The WD-40, I mean, this just ran right in rather easily, if I do say so myself. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure everything was cleaned out and uh, in good condition to accept the new nipple. Because uh, you don't want to have any leaks or any compromises in this, especially after you put everything back together again. Uh, and, and what I did in this case here, you'll see I used on the new piece, I first used um, uh, 
my lamp wick, my spool lamp wick to put on the nipple and followed by the spool lamp wick, I actually wrapped my Teflon tape around there and then followed by the Teflon tape, I used my super duper blue block thread sealant, which is basically a bulletproof way of doing things, especially if you don't want to come back for uh, nuisance leaks and it works like a charm. And uh, I just wanted to run this uh, nipple in there to see how it felt. And it felt pretty good. So uh, now the next order of business was to uh, get going with the sealant. And that you'll see coming up momentarily. And uh, I got my uh, nipple prepared. And like I said, I used my, my, my thread lamp wick followed by my uh, blue monster tape followed by my bulletproof blue block thread sealant, which is kind of messy. So have a can of lacquer thinner or WD-40 actually gets it off if you can get it while it's before it, it starts to set. But uh, I usually use lacquer thinner. So it's this is messy. So you got to be careful. It can get all over the place and get all over your tools, etc. But uh, you, you, you just work with it carefully. And then it was just a matter of putting everything back piece for piece. So just the way I took it off is just the way I put it back with all new components. And um, yeah, I mean, like I said, the pieces were pre-cut. And it was basically like putting the puzzle back again. And uh, after I got this as snug as I could with my channel lock pliers, I went and got the old 18-inch uh, uh, offset wrench and uh, wanted to finish it off. I want to get that in there tightly. And then, again, I think on the, uh, on the uh, opposite thread here, I did use uh, my uh, thread lamp work with the, uh, me the Blue Monster, excuse me, I was going to say Megalock, Blue Monster uh, tape followed by uh, my... Uh, my blue block and then the rest of them i just used uh for the rest of the joints and putting everything back together again i used uh just the uh the uh, the blue blue monster tape sorry the blue monster tape that's what i used for everything else the blue monster tape along with the blue block and that just got everything on as you can see here i put it all back together again i reused the two unions the unions were fine they were viable and they came uh, apart rather well. Put a new three quarter inch uh, drain valve in there. Uh, you know, once I got this thing fired up and called the customer down, I told him he's going to have to weekly come down in the heating season and drain water out of that side. You want to get all that crud out of there. That's the idea. You don't want to leave that crud in there because that's probably what caused the thing to prematurely uh, rust and rot out. And as you can see, you can see that valve there, uh, that drain valve on the return in the back was leaking. And, and actually, after I got this thing fired up, I realized that. And I went back and shut the boiler down again and took that valve off and replaced it. But um, it was time to fire this puppy up. And so what I did was is I uh, flipped the switch on, had this thing cycle, uh, and it actually filled up above the low water cutoff. The boiler came on. And soon thereafter, it started uh, to reach pressure. And that's when I realized that that drain cock I had left on the return was leaking. So I actually shut it off and I went back and I replaced it. So, but everything else was good. Everything else was cooking. And you'll see that coming up in the next frame. You can see when the blue block uh, kind of starts to cook, if you will. Uh, you'll see it uh, kind of bubble up, if you will. And you can see the new drain cock there. This is after I had the drain cock back on. I actually turned the boiler back on again. And you can see the way it kind of bubbles, if you will. And that's what happens when the heat gets to it. And uh, yeah, but that uh, ensures me a really watertight seal. And that's my insurance. Blue block is my godsend when it comes to preventing leaks. Again, it's messy. So be, be very, very careful with it. And uh, he's back in business. Uh, if he does the maintenance I tell him to do, take the water out of there every week, he shouldn't have a problem. Uh, as much as I tell people to do it, a lot of people say they will do it, but they don't do it. But nevertheless, this repair was pretty straightforward. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, not a difficult repair, but uh, again, 
you know, something you have to do in, in sections and do it uh, with intention and you'll be good to go. So there you go, guys. It wasn't too difficult. It was uh, basically, you know, going there, cutting and pre-measuring the pieces. I cut everything at my shop, so I, I had everything all ready to go once I backed everything off. I did use the existing unions. They were viable, in my opinion. Backed everything off, and as you can see, you know, I wasn't going to screw that nipple out. I just automatically go to the sawzall. I make my cuts. I get my caping chisel. I knock the piece out. That's the least uh, stressful way of doing things. And if you use the blue block with the uh, blue monster tape along with the uh, string type of lamp wick, you're going to be golden. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The most important thing you can do is actually like the video because if you don't like the video, YouTube basically puts these in the cellar and doesn't distribute them to anybody. If you have any questions about anything, please reach out to me and I would prefer that you use the email info. That's I-N-F-O at robertsessaplumbing.com and I will get back to you. I uh, appreciate you coming by as always. I know you have choices, but I am honored that you stopped here by the channel. And uh, yeah, heating season's upon us. And I'm sure I'm going to be seeing a lot more of repairs like the one you just saw in the video. Stay well, guys. Again, I appreciate you all. And I will see you again in the next video. Stay well and happy plumbing.